So we're going to be in 1 John 4 today. We are uh, entering into chapter 4 out of 5 chapters today of 1 John as we continue to move through. If you're using the Bibles from the church, that's page 694. And so you can look there. It's right towards the back, probably near the end of your Bible. And today we're continuing through our Be Real series, exposing Christianity for what it really is. Or um, the way I've kind of been saying it even is exposing Christians for who they really are, right? And, and John has been continuously giving us these um, series of tests, if you will, um, these self-examinations, because he says in 1 John 5, uh, 13, that I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. God bless you. So that you may know that you have eternal life. And so he is writing here in 1 John um, what those of, of Jesus, the followers of Jesus, the disciples, the apprentices, um, the people who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, what they are going to look like what they're going to smell like, what they're going to um, act like, what they're going to feel like. And, and, and so we've just been unpacking those things as we move uh, week to week. And so today we're in 1 John chapter 4. But over the last two weeks specifically, uh, John reminded us of the two defining marks of the children of God. The two defining marks. And so the first was uh, righteousness, right? Righteousness. We talked about um, practicing righteousness versus practicing sinning because those who practice sin are of the devil, John says. But those who practice righteousness are of the righteous one who is Jesus Christ, right? And so that was in uh, 1 John 3 verses 1 through 10. And then last week we moved into verses 11 through 24 uh, where he said that love is the other uh, defining mark of the authentic believer, of the Christ follower, of the children of God, is, is love, genuine love, right? And we talked about the difference between hatred and then love, but we also talked about a third, which I know many of us in the room were like feeling this, was indifference, right? It's not that we don't, ha it, 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 we don't hate them, like we have no reason to hate them, but we don't really love them either. We're just kind of indifferent, and, and John speaks to that, and, and we were reminded that that can be just as satanic and, and hateful as hate can be, right? When we are simply indifferent and, and, and careless, right? And so that was last week's text, but today's talk will seem short and a bit like review, and that is because John is very, first of all, straightforward in this passage. There's no like need for a bunch of deep interpretation. It's just, it is what it is, right? And so he's straightforward to say what he wants to say. And because it really is something he's written about more than a few times. Um, but in today's text, he really focuses in on one key point, which will really be our only point today. Um, so today, John the Apostle lays out what is the very foundation of love. What is the very foundation of love? What is the baseline? What is the starting point? of love, understanding love. So um, first, I, I would like to, this is not going to be on the screens. I want you to look at your Bible. Um, we're going to be in 1 John chapter 4, and I'm going to read um, the first bit of text today in 1 John chapter 4, which we will not focus in on so much today. But I do want you to notice something. So if you'll look with me at 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> and John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming, and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. And we are from God. 
And whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, right? And so we really talked about that back in 1 John chapter 2 um, a few weeks ago when we were unpacking verses 18 through 29, talking about the false prophets and those who are under the spirit of the Antichrist that John describes in 1 John chapter 2. And so here, he really is echoing, I, I want you to see this, he really is echoing almost exactly what he was trying to tell his readers in 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. Um, notice how he hits those same three signs of the spirit of the Antichrist that we described just a few weeks ago, that they depart from fellowship, that they then deny the Son, and then they attempt to um, deceive the faithful. And so we see that in this text, just as we saw it a few weeks ago in 1 John chapter 2. And so then John will move again, uh, move forward again into his favorite topic, which will be our main text today that we will unpack, which is 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. So if you would follow along in your scriptures or um, look with me on the screen. <clears throat> so it says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So John returns once again to his favorite topic, one that he addresses many times throughout this letter, to love one another. And we, and we said last week that this is intentionally repetitive, right? Like John is not getting amnesia and forgetting what he just wrote a couple moments before, but he is intentionally repeating this one point because he wants to put into his readers this, this main thing that the children of God will be marked by love for one another, right? And, and so in verses 7 and 8, when we read that term um, to know, let's, let's just look at it again. I'm going to grab my Bible. 1 John 4, 7 through 8, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. And so when, when you read this in the Greek, the term know, it is, it is this word. And I, I want us to have a little fun here. It's, it's that word right there. I want everyone in the room to give their best attempt at the pronunciation of this word. One, two, three. I think that was a pretty good guess. Uh, it was, it is gnosko. It's exactly what it looks like, actually. Uh, rarely in the Greek do you look at a word and you just know how to say it. But that is actually how you say it. It's gnosko. This word is, is translated to know. Um, and, and this word actually implies the same thing that the Hebrew word in Genesis 4.1 does. Um, when it talks about, and Adam knew his wife, <laughs> Eve, right? It's not talking about some kind of intellectual connection. It's talking about the deepest form of intimacy, right? And so it is, it is that same word, um, but obviously in the New Testament it is Greek. In the Old Testament it is Hebrew. But it is, de it is describing this, this very intimate love. It is more than simply being acquaintances, 
right? It's, it's actually to, to love and to be loved by God. It is to know him in, in just the deepest, deepest way. And then John reveals something um, about the very nature of God. God is love. God is love. Not, not God loves. God loves, certainly. But God is love. In his very nature. And, and remember, we talked about this in week two. When we talked about God is light. That there are only three nouns in scripture. There are many adjectives to describe God. But there are only three nouns in scripture. All given by John, interestingly enough. Um, that, that God is. God is spirit. John 4. God is light. 1 John chapter 1. And God is love. And that's, that's today's text in 1 John chapter 4. And so this means that everything that God does is flowing out of who he is. And so everything that, every way in which God acts is flowing out of who he is. And so his holiness, his, his, his faithfulness, his patience and his kindness, his, his, um, his ability to, to judge, right? All of that is flowing out of his very essence, which is love. God is love. It was once said that love does not define God, but that God defines love. Love does not define God, but God defines love, which means that all these other loves that you've experienced and the way in which maybe you have understood love um, prior to understanding God's love, any kind of love like that is not to, to determine, okay, this is who God is. It is that you must know who God is to understand what is truly love. And so all these other things will not simply define God or, or frame God for you. But when you begin to understand God and you have a personal faith and communion with God. And I'm talking about the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Then you understand what is truly love. John spends the rest of the text making this one point. And he, 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 he really emphasizes this and pushing this and this is that one point which will be our main focus um, for the next few minutes understanding the gospel is key to understanding love understanding the gospel is key to understanding love and let me show you in our text First John chapter 4, beginning in verse 9. In this, everybody say, in this. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us. That God sent his only son into the world, that we might live through him. In this, everyone say, in this. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And then verse 14, and we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him. And he in God. And so we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. John keeps going back to this, this truth that God the Father has sent his only son for you. God the Father has sent his only son for you. To be the propitiation for your sins. That you might live through him. This is love. He says in 1 John 4, 9. 
In this, love was made manifest. That term manifest, as you probably all know, simply means it takes form. To take form. And so when he says that, he's saying, in this, love took form. We could see it. We could touch it. We could talk to it. We could feel it. We could learn from it. In this, this is how we saw God's love. That God sent His only Son so that you might live through Him. That He sent. In this is love. In this, love was made manifest. That you might not only live through Him, but understand that He has come to be the propitiation for your sins. The Scriptures say, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you are not the exception. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. If you've ever lied. If you've ever stolen anything. If you've ever gossiped. If you ever watched porn one time. (laughs) If you ever talked back to your mama. Look, my mom is probably watching y'all. If you've ever, ever (laughs) sinned, and you have, I don't have to ask you, you have, because I'm human just like you, and I know I mess it up all the time, right? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but in this is love. In this is love that God the Father has sent His only Son for you. That He might be the propitiation for your sins. And we've we've talked about this before in this series. What does propitiation mean? It means that Christ in His death and in the shedding of His blood on the cross. He has um, taken your sin and shame and paid the debts that were owed. One of my favorite songs growing up used to be that old hymn. Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. We've all sinned. And God made his love take form (laughs) in this is love manifest that God sent his only son in human form, fully human and fully God. Now that's a tension to work out, right? Fully human, fully God, lived a perfect life, was tempted in every way, Hebrews says, but he, he resisted sin, he resisted the, the enemy who was tempting him. He lived a perfect life and then in the will of the Father... He walks up a hill called Golgotha, carrying his cross, beaten, mocked, and shamed. And they lay him on the cross, and they nail his hands, and they nail his feet, and he is there on a on a very bloody but somehow good Friday. And he dies about three o'clock that day and is put in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. And just a few days later would raise to life by the working of the Spirit of God. And it's for you. It's for you. It's for His glory. But it's for you. That He might show His love. That you might understand that what we said last week, He didn't just say, I love you. His love took manifest. It took form. And in this is love made manifest. That God the Father has sent His only Son so that you might live through Him. 
Because he is the propitiation for your sins. That you might leave sin behind. And you might place your faith and trust in Christ. Which verse 14 says, He has come to be the Savior of the world. He has come to save you from your sins. Would you believe it? <laughs> Would, and, and when I say believe it, like, it's too good to be true. <laughs> and most things that are too good to be true aren't true. <laughs> but you can bet every dollar you have in your pocket on this, that God the Father has sent His Son to die for you, to be the propitiation of your sins, that you might live through Him and in Him and for Him. This is the gospel. And you cannot know love, you cannot understand what is truly love apart from the gospel. You can understand charity. <laughs> you, you might can understand good deeds. But apart from God the Father sending His Son for you, that you might live through Him, for He is the propitiation of your sins. Apart from that, you cannot know love. This is love. This is love. He sent His Son to pay our debt. That, that Christ has come to be the Savior of the world. He has come to be your Savior. You don't have to live like that. Insert, you know, fill in the blank here. You don't have to live that life anymore. The Father in love has invited you into new life. The fullness of life. Life and life abundantly. And those who abide in this love. John says at the end of our passage today that the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, abide in those who abide in that love. God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Abide, and we said that word abide means to live or literally to make your home within. That he has made his home within us. That we might live through him. So, what's the application today? <laughs> well, it's this. I love what he says in verse 16. So we know that we have come to know his love and not only to know his love but to believe his love to know his love and to believe his love so then the direct application is this if you have not come to place your faith and trust in the person and work of Jesus Christ, love made manifest for us, the invitation is open to you every day. And Paul said, today is the day of salvation. There may not be a tomorrow. There may not be a tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. They're not, may, for some of us, may not be a three o'clock today. Love was made manifest for you that you might place your faith in, in the one who has come to be the propitiation of your sins. Would you repent of your sins? Would you repent of your sinful lifestyle and your evil practices and your wicked and rebellious ways and would you place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today there is another option guys you don't have to keep living that life it has been given to you that you might believe in Christ and live in his truth Let's pray.
Lord, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, whether, whether in this room, whether out in the tent, if we're talking online, across the world, across an ocean, anybody who is hearing this right now, Lord, I pray that they would know your love and that they would believe that love. That, Lord, they would repent of their sins and their evil ways. God, that, that, that heart of flesh might be turned into a, 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 a spirit-filled heart. Lord. Lord, you have a love that no one could ever understand apart from you. The love of the world, the love that we see in, in society and, and all those things, they may include charity, they might include good deeds, and, and Lord, they might include some amount of patience. But God, when we see your love, we understand what love really is. And God, in this, your word says, love was made manifest. Lord, that you have sent your Son for us, that we might uh, live through him. Lord, that he took the cross and was the propitiation for our sins, that he paid every debt owed. God, us who have placed our faith in Jesus, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, it is often that we go day to day and we just do not say thank you for your son. Lord, some of us, we go week to week, hour to hour, minute to minute, and we forget to be thankful for your son, for your love. Lord, for those of us who have not yet believed, Lord, I pray that, Lord, your spirit would do a work of regeneration in the heart. And, and God, that, Lord, you would lead them to repentance. And, Lord, that you would lead them to faith. And, Lord, that you would lead them to trust. And, Lord, give them a community here, Lord, that wraps their arms around them and, and says, we're doing this with you. We're following Jesus with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And so, as we reflect on the gospel, Paul encourages us in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, to then, out of our, out of our generosity, um, to, uh, out of the generosity that has been extended to us through Christ, that, that we then become generous people. And so, I would like to just encourage you um, to allow the Spirit to lead in your giving today. This is an act of worship, just as much as any song we sing, just as much as any scripture we read. Our giving, our generosity is, a, is an act of worship. And so our usher will be um, standing at the back door with a basket in hand, and you can drop your tithes and your offerings in that basket along with your communication cards if you haven't filled those out. Remember, if you normally fill those out, just leave your, leave your name, and that's just for our own personal records. And so you can drop those as you head out the doors today. And um, I know today was a quick, short service, um, but man, I, I think the Lord really moved today. And um, so um, I, I just want to pray as we head out the door for your own um, security in the Holy Spirit. And so let's pray. Lord, um, I just thank you for this service. Thank you for your gospel. Thank you for, Lord, your church and um, just the community you built here, God, and the family you put here, Lord. And, and Lord, I, I just want to pray for our giving, Lord, that you would just lead us to cheerful giving, um, to, to generosity for, our, for the ministry, um, for our community around our church, Lord, um, 
and, and everything that you, you um, do through those funds. And, and so, Lord, I just pray that in this giving you would bless the gift and you would bless the giver. And, Lord, as we depart, I pray your Holy Spirit would um, just keep us, Lord, um, protect us, guide us, Lord. I, I pray that you would shine your face upon these people, Lord, that you would, um, Lord, just um, give them your peace most of all, Lord, as they continue through their week, and then bring us back together at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.